Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show, brought to you by Bridgestone. If you missed any of last month's shows, you can go back and watch highlights from all of them in last month's April recap show at nextmotochampion.com. Or be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then you'll never miss an episode again. The latest issue of Next Moto Champion Magazine is out. This month features a Coda photo review, the Instagram page, product spotlights, writer columns, and the fan favorite, the Umbrella Girl of the Month. You can download yours for free, also at nextmotochampion.com. And now for the news. World Superbike had round four over the weekend at the Dutch circuit where Tom Sykes set the pace early in the weekend, but was quickly outdone by his teammate Jonathan Ray, who set a new lap record and became the pole setter. But that was before he was penalized for impeding Davies in the final seconds of SP2 and was relegated back to fourth on the grid for the race. That penalization did not hinder Ray's weekend, however. He was able to take the race one victory after a long battle with Chaz Davies, who ended up with a DNF in the penultimate lap. For race two in his 200th World Superbike race start, Ray crossed the line just .025 seconds ahead of Tom Sykes for the win, making it another double for the Ray history books. In World Supersport, it was a runaway win for Keenan Suffolklu after taking pole position for the weekend. The five-time world champion logged his first points of the season after missing the first two rounds due to an injury and then crashing out of the third round, making his first victory since he clinched the 2016 championship at Jerez last season. Let's take a look at your point standings after round four. Round five will take place at Imola May 12th through 14th. And now for Moto America. Where do we even begin? We haven't seen each other since the opening round at Coda where Moto America met Moto GP for another eventful Texas round. No surprise we saw Marquez take his annual win at the track, making him four for four now at the circuit. Moto GP will reconvene this weekend at Jerez. Another one who can say they are now four for four at Coda is Moto America's Tony Elias who dominated the opening weekend winning both races just like he did last year. Moving on to round two, it was a little different for Tony, was a lot different actually. In an uncharacteristic display of emotion after race one, Tony was visibly pissed at Cameron Bobier after multiple on-track incidences. After race one, Tony said something to the extent of, I'll remember that, and refreshed Cameron's memory on track with a few bold moves of his own in race two the next day. They had a few words for each other in the post-race press conference. Watch this. Did you see Josh Case on the grass? No. See, sure or no? No. Then I was on the grass yesterday. Well, maybe you should have gone on the brakes a little harder yesterday. He wouldn't, been on, he wouldn't have been on the grass. And what happened today? I was huh? not on the grass. I was not on the grass, but I, I already had it. Well, you still made contact with me. You but you, you, you couldn't beat me today. And yesterday, yes. No, I couldn't. No. What right. is your problem? No. What is your well, you couldn't beat me yesterday. Do you want you do, do you want about. to continue playing hard? Yeah, let's go. I will I will play I will play clean, but I play hard. I just want you I just want respect. I just want respect. Me too. I respect a lot you. <coughs> but I don't want to be on the grass. I, I don't because know. yes, but you didn't. I did I did I was on the grass. I was <coughs> on the grass twice. I had to come back three seconds far farther. I only saw once. The the first one a little bit a little bit more and I was more on the grass than the first one. Okay, there's 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 a reason why your nickname is Scud Missile. It's because no one knows where you're going on the brakes. <laughs> Look, man. Uh, bottom line, bottom line. I have respect for you. I Look, want you to be clean. And yesterday was not a dirty pass. It was a tough pass, and I didn't feel like it was dirty. I'm not a dirty rider. Was a back and look was, at all the races. I was, was, was a dirty, was a dirty okay, pass. Okay, okay. If, if, I, if I don't pick up the bike, you finish on the grass like me. Okay. But not on the bike, on the grass, like this. Okay, okay. We can, we can agree to disagree. Let the rivalry begin. In Super Stock 1000, Matthew Skultz notched his first win on U.S. soil. It was also his first time at Road Atlanta. The Yamalube Westby rider was hoping to do the double, but had a mechanical issue in race two on Sunday, and the race two win went to Jake Lewis. 
In super sport, Garrett Gerloff and Valentine DeBeast battled all weekend long and traded wins. Garrett took race one and Valentine took race two, giving us three different winners in three different races. And for the first time on the next Moto Champion Talk Show, we have M4X star Suzuki rider Valentine on to talk about his stellar race weekend and more, so stay tuned. In Superstock 600, M4 Med-Age Suzuki rider Nick McFadden notched his first career win, make that his first career wins, and did the double this weekend. In the KTM RC Cup class, Benjamin Smith also did the double. And last but certainly not least, Billy Etheridge went on to win the first of three in the Weir Triple Crown events that will accompany the Moto America Series at select events this season. Now that you're all caught up, let's check out the Dunlop Weekend Recap brought to you by Moto America. Rod's going to go through and turn it. Oh, Rod! Off that rear brake, a little bit sideways. He gets the thing down. He's going to have a go, Greg. Oh, on the brakes! Are you kidding me? A little bit of contact. Possibly Tony off the racetrack. Here he goes. He's up side by side. They go. Tony Elias now with the lead of the race. Can he hold on to it? Here comes Cambodia. Trying to square him up. He goes up the inside. Here we go down the bottom of the hill. It's Bobier with the lead. Tony Elias is getting sideways. Oh, and it looks like Cam Bobier is going to take the win. What an amazing race. Now for your Moto America standings after round two. Round three will take place at VIR May 12th through 14th. And on another note, next Moto Champion Cycling Team member and IMSA Sports Car Championship racer for Factory Acura NSX, Catherine Legg, got to take her very first two-up ride this weekend at Road Atlanta with Chris Ulrich. It also just happened to be Chris's 1,000th ride on the Dunlop M4 Suzuki two-seater. Team Hammer started its two-seat Superbike ride-along program as a way of educating members of the media about the sport of motorcycle road racing and as a way of promoting motorcycle road racing events and motorcycling in general. Catherine said she now has a newfound respect that it's impressive and that these guys are nuts. I agree to all of the above. And that's your dirt. If you're looking to purchase your next around town set of wheels, then look no further than the Kimco K-Pipe 125. It's price low, it's fuel efficient and low maintenance. Still not convinced? Then watch this week's product spotlight.
All right, we'll be right back with our guest, Valentine DeBees. Motorcycle. Great rates for great rides. This interview is brought to you by TAW Performance. He spent time in the 250 Grand Prix Moto2 and Super Sport World Championship as well as the FIM Endurance World Championship. He's a French national champion and now he's leading the Moto America Super Sport class after winning race two at Road Atlanta last weekend. Let me interest, introduce to you for the first time the number 53 M4X star Suzuki rider, Valentine DeBeast. Valentine, welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, we're happy to have you here calling in all the way from France, so we appreciate that. Uh, like I said, you're a first timer, you're now leading the points. So we wanted to get you on to talk about your weekend, but let's start with the beginning of your season since it's still pretty fresh in your mind. Uh, starting with the test, you were second overall after the Coda test and then second place at the first round at Coda as well. Is this the momentum you needed to get a win so early in the season? Yeah, my, my test went uh went good but not not like i want because we had some uh, some trouble with uh, with the bike and uh, but fortunately i was able to make some uh, good lap time at the end of the two day of testing and i feel like we lost a little bit of time and also during the first round um, because we are in the same time of moto gp we didn't get enough uh, track time to to set our problem but uh, we, we still get second position, which was really good for me because last year I was so far away from the lead. And uh, I also get the chance to make uh, one hour on the, on the track at Austin after the, after the race on Monday. And that helped me, this hour, it's only one hour, but this one hour helped me a lot because uh, I tried some stuff that I, I had in, uh, in my head for a long time and it seems like he's walking because then we, we went to Atlanta and everything worked really well there. Right, everything seems to be kind of coming together for you, starting with the test, the first round. So let's talk about the weekend. You were on fire, you looked so strong, your bike looked so great. Uh, race one was a barn burner between you and Garrett Gerloff all the way until the end. He ultimately passed you for the win, so talk about race one and how you were feeling. Ah, I was a little bit disappointed because uh, I lead all the both races because there is, uh, we had the one red flag during the race. And after um, I did a small mistake because I asked my mechanic to add a little bit more pressure into my rear tire between, uh, between the two races. And I think after the red flag, uh, I lost a little bit of grip and I wasn't able to be as, fa as fast as the first uh, the first race, and um, I, and then Gerloff went uh, really quick at the end, and he beat me uh, during the last lap. And he, but anyway, I was close, and I knew that the next day, with a good tire pressure, I will be able to to be a little bit faster, and so and so, uh, yeah, be faster, <laughs> which well. means. Uh, which means more easy to win race. <laughs> right, well, in race two, you looked that much better, which is hard to say, because in race one, you were on it. I mean, you were right there. Your bike looked incredible. So talk about your bike. 
Road Atlanta is Garrett's basically home track. He knows that place like the back of his hand. He always does well there. You were making some pretty bold moves. You were sticking the hard brake marks. You were diving deep into the corners and getting out of the corners as well. So talk about your bike and your setup and how confident you must have felt for both races. I set my bike in a way that uh, I can accelerate uh, really, really early compared to, to the Yamaha boys. And um, since I'm young, I, I'm, I'm, I'm able to brake late because, uh, because I use a lot of rear brake. And so it's why, so I make the brake and the bike makes the acceleration. So, so on some, on some track like uh, Atlanta, it's, um, it's really helpful for, for me. And yeah, my team work uh, really well this winter to give me a little bit more power than last year. And um, yeah, it's it's like um, now it's my bike fe feel like I'm home, you know. <laughs> so I do everything I want, and uh, I, I and I go everywhere I want with that bike. I can do exactly what uh, what I want to do. That is a great way to put it. Your bike is like your home. It looked like you looked very comfortable all weekend. Uh, Garrett went on to say that you're a monster in turn 10A. So talk about 10A, 10B for you, and how how you approach that turn. I don't, there is nothing really special for me. It's, uh, as I told you, I, I know how to break late. And so this place, it's even more hard to break late because it's going downhill. And um, yeah, I, I, just, <laughs> I just go straight on my front brake and rear brake and I push as, as hard as I can. And then uh, <laughs> I just turn like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Good way to put it. You just turn like crazy. Well, now you're sitting first place in the points after Road Atlanta. Congratulations on that. Um, but I want to talk about some of your off-season rehabilitation. You talked about off-season, your team working on the bike and things like that. But you also worked really hard on yourself. You had a shoulder injury that you rehabbed, but you also uh, found a, a new approach to your riding style, I heard. So tell us about that. Yeah, um, last year I started to work with uh, with Ken and um, Ken Hill, and he saw some stuff that uh, was interesting to me because uh, two years ago I had a bad injury on my shoulder, and um, and I think last year uh, I wasn't able to to go fast in a right corner as I used to be. And uh, I was thinking that was something because of my riding style, but I think it it came more by my shoulder that doesn't have enough power. So I did a lot of um, m more training on my shoulders than I did last year. And because of that, I was more able to change my, my position on the bike on the right corner. And I think uh, this makes uh, the biggest difference compared to last year. Okay, so let me ask you then more specifically about one part of your riding style. When you would get out of the corner, you would turn around and look over your shoulder, which a lot of people would say, don't do that. You're just wasting time. Just look ahead and stay, you know, stay on the gas. Talk about that move for you, because you did it a few times throughout the race. You looked over your shoulder, checked your line, I'm pretty sure. When, when I look back, it wasn't, uh, it, it was nothing for my shoulder because that was during the, the race one. And uh, I never hear the bike because I think um, before going uh, on the back straight, I feel like they was uh, they was not in the back of me and maybe uh, like four or five tenths in the back and it's why I look back and if they was close by me then I will try to go to move my bike during the straight to don't um, to don't help, help them on my taking my slipstream and if if they was uh, if they was far away then I just I just keep the fast line it's why I look back but I think uh, thinking of that. It was a mistake for me because uh, I, because sometimes it's hard to look back and then be focused again on my on my corner. So it's why during the second race I say okay, just focus on, on on my on my corner. And it gave you just the edge you needed to end up winning the race. So congratulations on such an early season win. Last year you took a win at Road America. A little later in the season, this year it's early on, which is a great way to start uh, the 2017 season. But let's talk about your time in Moto America. This is your second season here. You have an extensive race background like we talked about in the beginning. Um, so how are you feeling in Moto America? How's your experience so far? Uh, I was a bit worried last year because uh, it's um, when you when you go overseas and far from your house, it's always a strange feeling. 
but um, I really appreciate how, how all American people was um, happy about my uh, my coming in America, and uh, and now it's I feel really home if with my team and with uh, with all the people. Uh, I start to have some fans <laughs> who come and talk to me, which is a uh, really uh, great pleasure. And um, yeah, I think my feeling now it's like I, I don't want to come back in France and and mostly stay in America. I mean for racing. <laughs> ah, well, welcome to America. You did you did say, or I heard over the weekend on the broadcast that you were surprised at how cordial and friendly American racers were. Is that on track, off track, or both? Some riders, I think they are too friendly because I really I like um, I like when it's when we have some hard fight. And sometimes I wish that uh, some rider push me, but uh, but it doesn't happen. Uh, like I think the 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 most difficult rider to to fight with is uh, GD because he seems more like a uh, European rider. Oh, okay, good to know. Well, he does have European experience for that matter, so that's probably why. But you may end up with a Tony and Cameron incident if you're, incident if you're not careful. Um, but yes, the guys are otherwise really good riders. No dirty riding here if we can help it. Um, so talk about with be, being with one of the most well-known and well-established teams. You've got Chris Ulrich, who recently retired, and now he's focusing solely on the team management. How is it being part of Team Hammer? Um, it's a uh, it's really great path that Chris is uh, on my side because he have a really great experience. Also last year he helped me a lot because um, he always give me some advice about uh, about each track because he know everything. He know how the track are on the wet or or where where I can do some overtaking. So it's really helpful for me because he last year he, that's made me win a lot of time instead of trying by myself. He immediately tell me what's uh, what's what's my, the good advice. Very good. Well, it was a great weekend for Team Hammer. Uh, Jake Lewis won a race. Nick McFadden won two. You, of course, with your great finishes this weekend, and it was the X Star Suzuki Championship at Road Atlanta. So, where better to have a great weekend for all three of you uh, than at Road Atlanta? Valentine, we wanted to get you on and congratulate you on sitting in first place right now, going into round three. It's a great place to be. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, guys, follow Valentine on Instagram at Valentine underscore DeBeast. He posts a lot of great pictures of himself training on his bicycle, uh, him at the races, on the podium, all the good things you want to see from your favorite racers. Valentine, we look forward to watching you for the rest of the season. Good luck. Thank you. Absolutely. Okay, guys, we'll be right back after this commercial break. When only the highest level of quality and performance will do, it's TAW Performance. As the exclusive North American distributor for brands such as Brembo, Litec, and Marchesini, TAW Performance is globally trusted as the source for premium motorcycle parts. Kappa tire warmers for roto brake pads and Scorpion exhaust are reserved for motorcycle riders who want the best and will never settle for inferior products. These riders choose the trusted brands used in MotoGP, World Superbike, and Moto America. These exotic performance parts are now available on TAWPerformance.com. Woodcraft-CFM.com is your made-in-the-USA aftermarket parts specialist when it comes to rear sets, clip-ons, sliders, engine covers, and more. Woodcraft is the exclusive distributor of brands like Armor Bodies, Cycle Mount, and new for 2016, Hindle Exhaust, a combination of power, quality, and value that you won't find anywhere else. Find them all at Woodcraft-CFM.com. <laughs> It's time for a little segment we like to call the Next Moto Champion Moto Minute, where we get you up to speed on the latest and greatest motorcycles on the market in a minute. Today we're looking at the 2017 Honda Grom. If you like the old Honda Grom, Honda says you're going to love this one, and here's why. 
New styling, the first difference you'll notice is the all new, more aggressive bodywork and the rad new colors. You'll also notice the new LED headlight along with a new two tier seat, more defined tail section and the low mount muffler. Even though they've made some more aesthetic changes to the new Grom, some of the fundamentals remain the same. The Grom is still a 125cc four-stroke engine, which means a more approachable motorcycle that's easy to learn, easy to ride, is economical, and you can park it just about anywhere. Does it get any better? Let me tell you, it does. It has a multifunctional digital display featuring speedometer, odometer, tachometer, A and B trip meters, fuel gauge, clock, and indicator for low and high beam. It comes with top of the line hydraulic front fork suspension and single hydraulic rear shock and 220 millimeter front and 190 millimeter rear single disc brakes. And it even has a two up seat with room for an extra rider. They say great things come in small packages and starting at just $32.99 MSRP, you'll get all of this and Honda's reputation for quality and reliability. For more information, visit powersports.honda.com. And that's this week's Moto Minute. <laughs> All right, thanks so much for tuning in, and thanks to our guest, Valentine de Beast, for calling in all the way from France. We'll have more for you all season, including your favorite racers, fast products, Moto America, and American flat track coverage. Don't forget to join the over 10,000 others and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or find us on dailymotion.com. Join our newsletter and get this show and more straight to your inbox each Saturday. We look forward to a great season with you, and for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Today we're looking at the two. Just kidding. Bye. That's my exit. <laughs>